and I'll tell people, I'm gonna go slow, but I'm gonna read. <laughs> and then I opened my book and I started reading in class and teachers were amazed. Like they wanted to learn how to teach that method just because they saw my difference. Our guest today is the wonderful Carlota Emilia. Um, and just to fill the audience in, there's been a little bit of a change of plans for today. Um, I'm Sheridan Conway, Dr. Conway's son, also dyslexic, but I got remediation at, gosh, age seven, seven, eight, around that, um, and have not struggled since. Um, my sister got the same remediation at the same time, the same remediation that Carlota Amelia Wallace received. Um, so we're here today not to focus on me, but to focus on Carlota and your story and your journey. Um, so tell us a little bit about what it was like, um, you know, growing up, not only being dyslexic, but growing up in another country speaking a whole nother language. Yes, well, hi. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, um, growing up as a dyslexic in general, it for me in Latin America, it's very different from the, I guess, the American experience <laughs> of mm -hmm. how you grew up. Because here that like, for example, in schools, I mm -hmm. they didn't recognize what I had. And it really took a long time for for people to tell me that I was dyslexic. I went through a yeah. couple schools before that happened. And uh, I just, at the beginning, I was very little, so I didn't recognize what was happening. I was just going to school normal. And after a while, I started growing up and noticing, oh, they're not giving me the same books. I'm getting a different treatment in class. Um, so, <laughs> It's a really long story um, mm -hmm. from the beginning, really. But here, I went to and I went to psychologist. I went to different schools, mm -hmm. to American schools, and you know Latin schools, and to American schools, and psychologists, a bunch of things, really. And nobody could tell me that I had dyslexia. They just told me I had difficulty, but they didn't really know what it was until okay. my my mom had mm -hmm. my architect and at that time she had a job in the States and mm -hmm. near, your, near you guys offices in Ocala. And she went swimming and she met this woman <laughs> that yeah. also had her kid had dyslexia. And my mm -hmm. mom started explaining to her, listen, my kid, I'm very worried. She's not, she's 12. I was at the time 12 years old, mm -hmm. 12. She cannot read, she cannot, you know, spell or, you know, she's having a really hard time in school. And she noticed like, oh, this woman doesn't know what dyslexia is, like doesn't know what it means or anything. And she explained yeah. it to us and connected it with you guys. And mm -hmm. then I treated my dyslexia, but it was a taboo. Like it wasn't really something that I knew. Um, yeah. <laughs> really. <laughs> so how did, how did your dyslexia appear in, I, I take it you were pretty much in Spanish schools initially, right? Yes. Well, so how did your, yeah. How did your dyslexia affect your Spanish initially? Was it the same as English or a little different? A little different because I could hide it a little more in Spanish. Okay. Just because yeah. in Spanish words sound like like when you read, they sound mm -hmm. is the same, uh, mm -hmm. not all of them, but a couple of them. I still confuse a lot of, you know, letters like B and D and mm -hmm. also in numbers in this calculus. I also had yeah. a hard time <laughs> with numbers and mm -hmm. uh, it's really, it's slightly different because at the beginning I was in very Spanish Catholic schools and mm -hmm. They just keep telling my mom, like, listen, we cannot help her. She's, you know, she's doing things in another, in another pace. Like, kids are going a little bit faster in this area, and she's not reaching those goals. 
and I think we yeah. were really able to help her. And my mom had to drop me off a lot of schools, so I had to jump through a lot of schools. Mm -hmm. The only schools that could help me were the American schools here because they were more flexible with the learning and they had other ways to teach. It wasn't like always the mm -hmm. same. They could they mold themselves a little. So it was a little more helpful in English. That's why I went towards that language more because those schools were so more was, helpful. So it actually seemed to be a bit easier for you in English, learning English. Yeah. <laughs> why do you yeah, think that might have been? Yeah, and I had the advantage that since I was really little, my mom gave us like movies in English, you no know, songs in English, so I already have spoken the language. And if it okay. had from zero, I don't know if I could really had you know developed the help in English. Mm -hmm. Is it's really different, but so that yeah, additional exposure was really helpful to you. Yes, since really little, I don't remember when I started learning English. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. And I think, thank God, because if not, I wouldn't have the help. And I had to learn a new language from zero. And mm -hmm. uh, apart from the dyslexia, I think it would have been really hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you this. When you received, you know, you did the work at the clinic, you went through all of those different programs. You did all the stuff with the funny mouth pictures and you worked on stuff with uh, some, some like touching and saying of like blocks and felts and things like that. And all the way beyond that into kind of like grammar stuff. Okay. Did, did you feel like that helped just your English or do you feel like any of those skills you were able to kind of carry over to Spanish? I mean, when you, when you start at the Moore Center, for me, for example, mm -hmm. in my experience, I was, I felt really big for like the age to get mm -hmm. in there. I went in and there were kids younger than me already getting help. And I'm, I remember mm -hmm. me thinking, how lucky are them that <laughs> they found this at, at an old, uh, younger age. Yeah. And then me, I was 12 and I felt like, you know, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be able to, like, help, get help, or mm -hmm. get better at this age already, because I knew my brain was more developed, and I don't know, I don't know if it was even possible. But when I started get going, it wasn't mm -hmm. just, oh, I need help with um, my reading and writing and numbers. It was mm -hmm. also, I had a lot of story behind it. Like I went through a couple of schools, I went to psychologists, I went through all these things that tried to help me and didn't work. So I thought, oh, this is another place that's trying mm -hmm. its best. And I feel bad for them because they're not gonna be able to help me. You know, I've been through a lot of this. And actually I, I, I'm happy that I got the surprise of, you know, they, they were able to help me. But also it was a lot of more of like the psychology part of it that I was mentally, you know, very um, tired of it, like of the mm -hmm. help. I, they didn't yeah, it's, help it's me. It's exhausting. It's exhausting. You know? <laughs> they and didn't it's the same, and when it's the same experience over and over again, you, yes. it really beats down your faith. Yes. And, and I remember thinking like, my mom is gonna waste her money <laughs> in this. We had to fly to this new country, you know, mm -hmm. go to this little, like, like this place to them to mm -hmm. help me. So Tim had to really work on like me getting positive because I wasn't yeah. really that positive at the beginning. I was actually kind of sad. I was like, you know, I don't, I don't think they're gonna help me. But- Yeah, anyway. let alone being away from home in a whole nother country. Was that the first time you've been to the US? Uh, yes, I think so. Yeah, it was the first time. And the first time I, I went to an international fight far from my oh. in the country. And mm -hmm. um, I was kind of scared because like, I went with my mom the first time, but then I went to a couple of the other times and mm -hmm. then I just go alone. My mom was like, you got this, <laughs> just go. <laughs> and I got in a plane, 12 years old, in a plane, you know, mm -hmm. going to the US, staying like for, I think it was five months at mm -hmm. a time when I went to you guys, because I had to go back to school, then go back to the US and, um, 
it was it was I had to travel, but it was fun because it was like oh this new world where yeah. I am this person and I tried to bloom really like in personality. Mm -hmm. Like I tried to show up more of my personality in school. I tried to, you know, because I remember thinking to myself, if I get to read and write, I could do anything. Like that's the only thing yeah. that's stopping me. I remember mm -hmm. thinking that. So once I got that, I was like, wow, like I can do whatever. If this was like the hardest thing I could do for me and I did it, you know, and with all your help, you know, it was for me, the limit was the, was the sky. <laughs> Pretty yes. <much. laughs> but and not only the, you know, the programs helps and the, the clinics helped, but your help, because most importantly, you know, yeah. I, I love the saying of you can't, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't force it to drink. Yeah. You know, if the number one factor that decides what you get out of these programs is your effort and how much you put in and really take initiative and put those those methods into practice. Yes. And because if, if you don't want to do it, I mean we can we sit there for hours and you know nothing gets done. You know, it's yeah. it really comes back to the student has to put in the most effort yeah because you're the one doing the hard work you're the one making the change you're the one that's away from home you know has taken on this difficult task to face something that you know you've time and time again experienced people said they could help with and then it didn't follow through yeah and giving me promises because every time mm -hmm. i went to school they Told me, I promise you're gonna be, you're gonna succeed, your success. You're gonna be the, like the best. You're gonna be so much better. And it didn't happen. And when I heard, oh, you're gonna be so much better here, like don't promise something <laughs> you're not gonna be able to do. And but exactly. that's the week, like uh, that's why I, I started changing my motivation, started changing, and you know my ability and everything started getting better because the, I saw that the first week there was changes. This first week and. I was telling myself, I've been 12 years, you know, in this. And in 12 years, there hasn't been one change. And in a week, I got a change. You know, I started reading in a week, very slowly, you know, with the help of, you know, the mouth movements and everything. But in a week, yeah. there was already change. And I couldn't believe it. So I was like, oh, this is worth it. Like, I need to get my whole energy into this. And it really changed. That's really fantastic. Quickly. Yeah, it really changed really quick once we started. <laughs> that's fantastic. Not everyone sees that change so quickly. So that's no. incredible. No, no, no. And really, really a testament to how hard you worked to, because not only were you just doing the programs, you were you know, taking those methods and things that you were practicing and doing in the clinics and then practicing them afterwards you know you go to the grocery store whatever you know <laughs> just putting those things into practice trying to read you know products on the shelves that kind of stuff yes i remember in the one one thing i remember like even going from the airport from venezuela i was mm -hmm. thinking like you know when the the when you're in the car and you read the little letters like oh this way highway something mm -hmm. or yeah, this way to the airport or something those little yeah. things, like and signs and I remember mm -hmm. if I don't come back and I cannot read this this thing like mm -hmm. this, uh, as fast as the car is going, I didn't make it. <laughs> and yeah. I remember the state being like, read it, read it, read it before the car yeah. passed. <laughs> a little, you know, a little game that was like, I need to get to read this <laughs> as fast yeah. as you know, the car is going through. Mm -hmm. and, and I came back and I read it. I was like, it worked. <laughs> and let me let me ask you. Those signs in Venezuela, are those in English or in Spanish? They're in Spanish. Yeah. But the thing so, is, it helps more than just in English because you're not just talking about, you know, when you first get there, the mm -hmm. first impressions that I had with him really is sitting with him, with him and he talked directly to me. Like the rest mm -hmm. of the, the, 
before the schools always talked to my mom directly and I was kind of invisible. I was sitting next to her, but you know, the conversation was with her. And this time the conversation was with me. He told me, listen, this is how things work. And he told me, this is the brain. We need to connect this part of the brain with this part of the brain. So you, you create ideas and you're more visual. So we need to create things more visual for you and you need to work with your all, all the methods. And it doesn't really just work. Think People think it's just for reading and writing. Mm -hmm. And you think, oh, you're working the brain. I mean, you're exercising yeah. the brain. So you are getting better in other things that unconsciously you're already doing, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, the motivation definitely helps. <laughs> yeah. To do yeah. Things. <laughs> for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So let me ask you another question, okay? Okay. When you went back to school in Venezuela after, well, I guess this would be between, because you came twice, correct? Yes. I, kept, I went a couple of times. I think more than twice. Okay. Um, and in between, I know you were in, prior to coming, you were in a Spanish school or an English international school? I was already at that time in American schools, in English, okay. English speaking schools, just mm -hmm. because I really worked and I didn't want to, you know, they were more flexible with my yes. methods. And once mm -hmm. I, first, I first went with you guys, I went back with my toolbox, you know, with everything, mm -hmm. all the kits <laughs> that mm -hmm. you guys gave us. And uh, it, I already like, my desk was like the most fun looking one because I had all these mm -hmm. things that you guys gave us for help reading. Yeah. And so, so that first time you hadn't finished the programs at that point. You no. came for a little while, the, yeah. the time that you could spend here, and we did as much as we could then. And then you went back and then came back, I think a year, a year or two later, something like that. Um, yes. When you first went back and you hadn't finished the programs yet, mm -hmm. how did you feel about going back to school at that point? I was a little, um, actually it was a lot more, more, more excited excited i think and because i was happy to show people the change i talked with a lot of uh like i didn't talk with my teachers then but i knew for example that the now program i was going to keep doing the now program at school like after school and that i knew that my reading was better and i knew that I had all these tools that if it didn't go well, I could go back to these tools and go, you know, my own step of the way. Mm -hmm. And also uh, it's more like the mentality that they, I, I brought back to the school once, once I was working with you guys, because I mm -hmm. remember thinking like, oh, I'm always distracted. Like that was my inner voice. Like I'm always mm -hmm. distracted. I'm not good at this. I, you know, all these negative things I was telling myself. But then I remember, no, no, I just have different skills. You know, mm -hmm. I remember going to school and telling myself, oh, this is not like my strengths. I definitely mm -hmm. can work on it and it will get better, but I have my own skills. And it wasn't something that was taking me back. I was just like, oh, this is one class. I'll do my class with the best I can with all these tools that I brought from the Mori Center. And uh, I'll keep doing my, the, pro, the now program online i still got that help i wasn't like completely alone like you guys didn't mm -hmm. like oh no back to the world <laughs> yeah, no okay you're it good was, you know, like, <laughs> okay we, we got you you're gonna come back next year it's okay we you have your tools you know how to read you just need a little more time it's fine take your time you can take mm -hmm. as much time you want and uh, you have our, our help always and I was actually really excited. And once I got, I actually told him, oh, I want to read out loud. Oh no, I want to do this. And I'll tell people, I'm going to go slow, but I'm going to read. <laughs> and then I opened my book and I started reading in class and teachers were amazed. Like they wanted to learn how to teach that method just because they saw my difference in five months. It was, it was crazy the difference. So they wanted, they told me, how can we contact them? 
we want to like bring this to the school and uh, i think it's the best thing i try to talk about you guys as much as possible in school <laughs> we definitely appreciate that <laughs> it was a big change so i think everybody was really impressed yeah now, I'm I'm checking real quick here, Carlota. Okay. It looks like the first the first time it was a little bit less than five months. Okay. It was actually just a little over two months. Okay. Okay. Wow. It's a little less so, than five. Okay. No, end of January to beginning of April. So a little a little over two months, maybe two and a half months. Wow. That was really fast. But, you know, you did so much work. I'm sure it felt like five months. Because <laughs> yeah. it is, well, it is not day. like you're just doing a little bit of work, you know? Yeah. Every you're day doing... I was very tired. Like, I went after the morning center. I was just like, okay, I need a nap. <laughs> this was a, a lot of work. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and did it, did it ever feel like, you know, this was too much work? Like, you felt like you couldn't do this and you know well, maybe there like were, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there were days that it was a little bit overwhelming but i knew it was worth it like i could see the differences mm -hmm. it wasn't it wasn't like uh it wasn't like oh it's, this is not gonna work kind of talk it was more like oh today i'm a little tired like i remember once we well we started more center like in the morning and we went and there's like a little Piece of piece of paper that they had. Mm -hmm. I remember perfectly, like what you ate, how many times mm -hmm. did you sleep. Um, there was like a couple of questions, and I remember filling them up and make you more like conscious of what you're doing pre, like before the 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 classes and everything. And mm -hmm. the food was. I remember. Oh wow! Like food is not just like health wise to look good or to exercise or whatever, it mm -hmm. really affects your brain. And I remember thinking, the day I ate cereal, I didn't do so good, <laughs> you know? And yeah. I, <laughs> and the day that I ate like a lot of protein, I don't know, like eggs and mm -hmm. I don't know, those kind of things, uh, yeah. I did so much better. And I remember I didn't sleep much that day also. So that probably mm -hmm. affected how I responded during your classes. And it made me more, aware of you know mm -hmm. it doesn't just happen in class it also happens at home like you need to do Absolutely. you need to do things mm -hmm. to get better like to so you perform better <laughs> that's mm -hmm. the word uh, to perform better because it really it made, really made a change and it it wasn't like oh what all day in one class it was minutes so i wasn't really tired mm -hmm. or do one thing it was like Oh, now we do the words, and then we're going to do like exercises, and then we're going to go outside, and then we go back in. So you always mm -hmm. had like it wasn't always like a class in an hour and just in a class listening to a teacher. No, it wasn't like yeah. that. So it wasn't really tiring at some point. I actually got excited. It was something different mm -hmm. that was helping me, and it wasn't that tiring. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, that's the goal, and that's yeah. the difference. You know that we that comes in when you're in that uh, transdisciplinary clinic model where you have the, the speech language pathologist, the psychologist, occupational therapists, and the highly trained academic instructors delivering these you know, evidence-based high fidelity remediation programs. And you, you kind of bring all of those treatment specificities together. So you get, you know, your academic instructors are also getting and discussing feedback and stuff with the SLPs and the OTs and the psychologists of, you know, how do we help Carlota, you know, sometimes she looks like she's getting a little sleepy in session. So maybe we need to have her stand up and do some jumping jacks for okay. five minutes, five jumping jacks, and then we go back to work, you know, things like that. Yeah. that you know, in a traditional classroom, they're not doing stuff like that. You know, you can't just get up in the middle of the class and start doing jumping jacks, you know? Yeah. And that's part of what having that experience helps with 
is helping not only to help you develop strategies that help yourself to improve your attention, not just through, you know, medication. You know, that's, and, and that's a hot topic in here, and I'm sure in a lot of countries around the world, that, you know, there's a lot of things that we can do and should try before we get to that step. You know, that's kind of the, the last thing. But before we get there, we should be trying, you know, how do we build your, gosh, what is it, your internal awareness? And, and the term is escaping me. Um, essentially, your, your awareness of your own body's energy levels and needs and that kind of stuff, you know, recognize when, like you were just saying, you know, some mornings when I eat cereal, you know, I'm not able to pay attention as well. And I'm, I'm not able to, you know, I'm not as quick on my toes those days. But when I have eggs for breakfast and, you know, add some protein in there, maybe an omelet or some, some sausage, something like that. Yeah. And, you know, now you've got a good hearty breakfast. You've got lots of protein. You've got lots of is it, omega-3s from the eggs and stuff. You know, your brain has all of the nutrients that it needs to really be firing on all cylinders yeah and well in my case for example i don't just have dyslexia i have adhd <laughs> and i have dyscalculia and and you know I, I got really distracted really fast so i needed you know i took vitamins in the morning because it was like an extra help and uh, yeah. it definitely changed like the meals really affected <laughs> You know, and at one point I didn't eat like any carbs and sugar because I was like, I need to be focused. Yeah. <laughs> and I ate, like almost like ate a steak in the morning. I was like, okay, we're ready for the day. <laughs> you know, and uh, uh, that was the best times that I had like my focus and I felt better. Like, mm -hmm. I felt like I took the day was, you know, well worth it because, you know, I, I did the most I could. And I was exhausted afterwards, but it was, it was like a happy exhausted. It's like, okay, yeah. today I gave it all. <laughs> mm -hmm. And for kids, you know, I think as dyslexia, you kind of have to grow a little fast because you have had different experiences than your usual student. And uh, well, coming from Latin America, it also happens that you need to grow a little faster than, than your normal age. And mm -hmm. I remember, very conscious of okay this will take money and i need to you know you need to be aware and focus and i need to eat the best meals i kind of feel like an athlete you know like yeah this, yeah you need to have a result you know i mean that's that's what education is you know it's it's athletics yeah. for your brain you know? <laughs> yeah. that's the muscle you're working you're not working out you know your other muscle groups you're working out your brain that is yeah. your muscle in academics. Yeah, and I did other sports at the same time. I did swimming and I had, you know, different things that I was very active. And that's really good. And I remember those, those being, also Yeah, that help helped a lot. So much. Well when, when I came back it's a funny story, but when I came back to Venezuela from Ocala, mm -hmm. my mom and I were like, okay, we don't got that helps so there, like that that you no know, physical interactive mm -hmm. help. So we need to make it like ourselves. Mm -hmm. And it was a big help because my mom was like, okay, we got the opportunity to play golf in the morning. So we woke up at four in the morning. We're gonna play golf before before class or we're gonna go swimming. Or we're gonna do like something that drains me a little bit. So in class, I'm very focused, you know? Yeah. So we went and I, I Googled and golf was like one of the best uh, like sports because you always had to focus in this ball and you know, the movements and everything was really good. So, uh, so my mom and I woke up at like, Four in the morning, we're like, okay, let's go. <laughs> Our routine in uniform, playing golf for a little bit in the driving range. And then we're like, okay, going to school, you know. And then we went to school, and it, I saw a difference before, like, working out in the morning. And it is a very, like, as you can see, it's very athletic, like, wise. My family is very athletic also. So mm -hmm. it was, um, my mom kind of enjoyed that part. <laughs> my mom was like, <laughs> to do this and meal, good. and meal prepping and everything was mm -hmm. you know vitamins it's, everything very organized 
Yes. It's it's so much more than, you know, just the, the kind of quick fixes that I think a lot of people, uh, a lot of us, and I mean, I'm guilty of this too. You know, I, I love just a quick fix for something, you know, if it, <laughs> That that's more more of my own ADHD coming out. If they, you know, <laughs> unless I'm really passionate about it, like getting that all that effort in to really you know do something I'm not quite so passionate about is mm -hmm. quite a chore. So if there's a quick fix, I love it. <laughs> but you know that's not the reality of a lot of these things that are more complicated. You know, mm -hmm. it's it takes so much more from you know not only the academic side but the health and wellness side and the exercise and the nutrition, you know, it all comes together to boost, you know, your abilities. But on top of all of that, you know, comes the evidence-based programs, you know, mm -hmm. if you're not starting from those very basic skills, you know, mm -hmm. you're starting on the second story. How, how can you expect to build something solid if you don't have a solid foundation? Yes, so. I remember. I remember that very well from the Moore Center. Mm -hmm. They told me, and I, it got like, uh, stamped in my forehead practically. <laughs> but mm -hmm. I was like, uh, they told me if you don't do step by step, like don't skip it. Don't skip that yes. middle step because if mm -hmm. not, your brain is not gonna be con make that connection. And you exactly. need to, no, it's gonna be a real slower, and can you can get a little bit unpatient, unpatient, unpatient. Sorry, <laughs> and. Mm -hmm. um, but it's needed. And then I I kind of put it in, in my life in every aspect that I, I can. Like in school, for example, in university, well, I didn't get really help for dyslexia. So I had mm -hmm. to do it for myself and I already knew. Tim helped me to teach myself how to learn mm -hmm. pretty much. So I already had the basic. Like I already had the guy. You had the method down. Yeah, I had the method down. So every time there's something new, I'm like, okay, first step, <laughs> this, second step, this. And then if the teacher like kind of went over something and didn't really went, you know, into a subject that I thought, okay, this is one of the steps that I cannot mm -hmm. skip, I'll be back and I'll be like the student that is really annoying <laughs> and be like, hey, you need to repeat this. <laughs> okay. You need to this and I'll be the one in front because I know I get really distracted. So I'm I did all those methods that team told me to do. For example, sitting mm -hmm. in the front was one of the things that I thought I need to do. And, and is that something that you used to do? Before? No. I used to Where be like you... in the middle or in the back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, don't follow me. I don't want to read <laughs> out loud. Mm -hmm. And I remember a couple just, of just kind of blend in, don't call yeah. on me. Exactly, yeah. blend in. And I want to be perceived as, oh, cool, or something. And I didn't want mm -hmm. to, you know, interrupt or, you know, and I wanted, and inside I was dying to be part of the conversation, but mm -hmm. I wasn't being part of the conversation. So I was, yeah. really, and teachers, obviously, at some point were like, oh, God, I need to read aloud or, you know, or something. And mm -hmm. I, re because I discovered at 12 years old, there was a lot of experiences before, before 12 with mm -hmm. me not knowing I was dyslexic. So every time, you know, I read out loud, I started mm -hmm. crying because I was like, I can't, like, I don't know what the words mean or what they're saying or the sounds they're mm -hmm. making. You know, I know how they look. I don't know how they sound. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it was, oh, it was, I don't know. It wasn't like the same language that I was speaking kind of. Mm -hmm. So yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of experiences like those. Yeah, and that's that's the unfortunate side of dyslexia. And, you know, I would say you're very fortunate that, you know, you only had some experiences like that. You know, there's still, you know, significant experiences that shape your life. Um, and I, I think of, you know, Myself, like I don't have memories of those experiences. Okay. You know, I I have some experiences. The dysgraphia, I feel like, was a much more difficult part for me. I writing essays was, you know, always a, a very oh big God. chore for me. And yeah. I it's don't know so if that was so much getting. I worked so 
sweating. <laughs> I don't know if that was so much just forming the words and the sentences as much as it was mm -hmm. the task of having to sit down and do this activity that was hard. And being a child with serious ADHD, you know, I would just be you know, trying to write an essay was I had to have someone sitting there with me and they were holding me accountable the entire way, walking me through the process, making me come up with these sentences and write these sentences because I would get one sentence down and then I'm, you know, bouncing around the room away from the table and they have to corral me back to the table to write another sentence, you know, yeah. because it's just exhausting and it's, you know, it's so difficult. But yes. for many, I think, you know, there's still so many out there that don't have the, you know, fortunate experiences that you and I both had of receiving evidence-based services that boosted yeah. our skills and, you know, made it so that, you know, I'm sure I, I still struggle from time to time with small things and I kind of learned how to, you know, as I go through life, which areas I need to spend a little more time working on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I don't think, you know, dyslexia isn't something that's just like a, a disease that's just cured and then you never have to deal with it ever again. It's a, it's a lifelong you yes. know, thing, but the difference is, you know, how big of an impact that has on your life. And so, I, I want to ask you this very bluntly, you know, do you feel like you have been better, your skills have been better or about the same, whether if, after receiving those uh, evidence-based services, do you think that, you know, without them, you would still be exactly where you are today? And do you think, you know, everything would have happened the same? Or do you think that you know, it's helped and made things easier. I mean, I'm not the same person, honestly. It's, if I wouldn't have gone, I don't know if I would have finished high school or like any, like any, any uh, schooling, really. Because mm -hmm. I knew what I wanted to get. I always knew what I wanted to study. I always mm -hmm. knew I wasn't more into the arts. And I remember thinking how annoying is that I need to go to this filter <laughs> of mm -hmm. <laughs> life that I need this to get to the other place, you know, to go to university or go to this, you know, uh, to yeah. learn more to learn. And I remember thinking, I'm in the arts, you know, I like the arts. <laughs> I want mm -hmm. to do all these technical things that I'm not really mm -hmm. good at and they stress me out. <laughs> and you know, I remember mm -hmm. and I definitely it, something I needed because um if I I definitely need I still have it. It's not something that goes away like you say. It's not a disease. It's not something that goes away. And people ask me those kind of questions actually a lot. And it's kind of shocking. Like, wow, people still don't know much about dyslexia. And yeah. there's no, for me, coming from Latin America, there's a lot less here. Like, I still teach people what it means here. And I'm not a scientist. You know, I don't know how to explain you the technical part of it. I know my experience and I know how to explain it. And people here don't really, like, there's no help here at all. And it's, um, I mean, they, there's personal tutors and there's things like that, but there's no, like, help for dyslexia. And uh, not... to literally fly to a new country to, yeah. to learn, yes, to learn. And it was very, des like, desesperating once I got it, it was incredible. And yeah, to answer your question, Definitely, my if if I couldn't have done that, I wouldn't have succeeded, really, or gotten to my to where I'm starting right now. And even if I did get to where I am right now in my, you know, I, I started fashion design, and even if I got here without your help, it, I wouldn't really succeed as much as I wanted to, or I wouldn't reach the goals that I wanted to because it's something you need. You need to read and. I would I would say like oh maybe the world <laughs> there's ways you don't need to read everything no you do <laughs> I'm sorry you do you need to, to learn some basics and you know to get to read things because if not you don't have way to communicate with other people yeah. and saying it from from what I study I study 
art, something in arts, mm -hmm. you know, and there's also many ways to express yourself. But words can, you know, project a lot and it's needed. Not just for reading and writing, in life. Like my motivation, my personality, I think it wouldn't get grown. And the relationships in general. Mm -hmm. And yeah, no, it's definitely it's necessary, necessary in necessary. all aspects of life. Yeah. You feel like you're drowning always. Like you're always in mm -hmm. this, in this, uh, how you say, like in an emergency always like you no know, like mm -hmm. just trying to to always be okay and show off and show up to your you know what you need to do and make mm -hmm. it not you know take um uh how uh, say like take you know like, like oh, overwhelm you overwhelm you but it's true before i felt like i was always in that situation like trying mm -hmm. to show that i could do it without reading or doing this and when I once I got the help and I could you know that weight just got off my shoulders I was like okay now I can you know do my thing mm -hmm. it won't interrupt you know the process that's fantastic <laughs> and Latin America. We, we've got a question uh, oh. from the audience I think Dr. Conway is not with us today he's had yeah. a, a bit of an emergency he has had to catch a flight but i think he's tuning in from the flight here oh, uh, <laughs> so i think this i think this may be him uh asking you know what skills are stronger for each of us um since completing the training at the Moore center what okay skills mm -hmm. mm, that's a good question and there's so many <laughs> but i can I, like Make, it's making me think about the classes, like different classes mm -hmm. that we did, like the OT classes, and mm -hmm. then more like the, the the cards that we did also, the games mm -hmm. around it also, that were, were very creative. It didn't make mm -hmm. it tiring. But what skills? I mean, I don't know, there's so many. Because, I don't know, they help me with so many things. Is There's no one. <laughs> Can yeah. that be the answer? Or, there's no one. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can say for myself, the the skills that are for certain stronger for me is, you know, not just reading, but comprehending and understanding okay. what I'm reading. Okay. I think nowadays, the, like right now, okay. Mm -hmm, the, okay. the training that, you know, I went through really helped me. My, my brain moves at like a million miles an hour and has always been that way. And so when reading things, you know, I wasn't fully attending to and really taking note of what each word was and what it meant as I was reading. I was just kind of reading the word and flying through the sentences. And, you know, it seemed like I was reading fine because I'm saying the words just fine. But, you know, when you ask me to, you know, specific questions, you know, I'm giving you just kind of the general context of what the sentence said. But fine details, I was passing those over. And now, you know, I am almost hyper aware of the fine detail in these sentences and, you know, what each word means and how that influences the whole sentence as a whole. And, you know, that that bigger understanding and focus was a real big piece for me. Now that you say that, it makes me, yeah, now I'm thinking of more of this for me now, the storyline, you know, that when you read in the more center they're like okay what does it mean that what you're reading like mm -hmm. the story kind of that right now i use it in so many ways in mm -hmm. like reading the storyline or reading and learning the storyline i don't know if there's enough best way to explain it <laughs> because how it's coming out <laughs> but yeah. um but yeah that that for me in like creating creating art pretty much or designing mm -hmm. I use it a lot reading I, it helps to like understand okay what's the storyline and now i'm actually in my thesis that mm -hmm. um, my fashion thesis that i turn in uh i was known for that like the teachers mm -hmm. told me you have like a really strong storyline and mm -hmm. that really helps to like communicate what you're trying with art with when when i say art 
and it was I kind of was like oh like a little bulb you know turned on I was like oh my god that comes from you know from reading and trying to learn this storyline it really got you know that word really marked was really marked for me like creating mm -hmm. the storyline I remember that <laughs> yeah but yeah Let's see, it looks like we've got a little, a little more specific um, with the question. Okay. So let's go through these, you know, specifically. Has your, your reading, your spelling, your writing, your okay. comprehension, which is like understanding, thinking, and yeah. reasoning or other brain powers improved? And how much yeah. would you say that they improved? Just a little, medium, a lot? Well, when I had the help, obviously, it was another another level. Like, it was mm -hmm. so much faster. Once mm -hmm. you once you do it yourself, it takes a lot of more energy, to say, because you're not going somewhere. You're not, like, spending the time, you know, trying to make all these things grow. And mm -hmm. uh, I feel I grew a lot faster with the more center than them by myself definitely mm -hmm. uh, but i had to push myself to read you know be patient with myself because i wanted to read faster and i yeah. really couldn't and i got you know sometimes angry <laughs> with myself mm -hmm. but I, if i learn little things by myself for example like don't read don't, don't just read any book like read a book that you really are interested in or a subject you're really interested in. So you get, you know, there's just, it's not only like, oh, I need to read more. It's like, oh, I really want to know more about this story. And it gets mm -hmm. you like more motivation to read more. And so would you um, say your mm -hmm. ability to read, your reading skills, did they, how much do you say they improved? Just a little bit? No, a medium amount, a lot, no, not at all. I, from nothing, so from zero to <laughs> to reading, mm -hmm. a lot, a lot, a lot. It really, really helped. Right now, I, I'm I'm always been a slow reader. I haven't been really fast, and uh, I use other methods too. Like sometimes, and often. and that's something that is a little bit different. Um, that a a lot of people uh, associate reading speed with you know how dyslexia and your ability, you know, to read or write. But, you know, reading speed is something that really comes way later. You know, that just comes through lots and lots of practice once you've already got the skills and you can read. But if, you know, you're struggling to read, we can't expect you to, you know, okay, now you can read to so go read, you know, 150 words a minute or something, you know super fast you know that's that's not realistic to expect of someone yes and i i kind of uh, well writing also i see here this writing also and it did help i still mm -hmm. i'm because i have spanish and english i sometimes mm -hmm. mix the the sounds because in spanish yeah. is one thing in english it's like a couple of things mm -hmm. <laughs> and, <Yeah. laughs> and i still confuse some sounds but I I used to be really ashamed of it, like really ashamed of the dyslexia. And now I kind of feel really empowered because of it. So it's not, it's something that I've learned to cherish actually, or to like show more. And I'm not you know, like, okay, I speak two languages. I also, you know, I, I learned how to sound, make the sounds and you know which sound is coming. Now you do it a little more immediately. Like I don't need to, be thinking, oh, the tongue, the sound, the vibration. You know, I don't need to be thinking all those things now. I do it more immediately because I did it so many times. But now it's yeah. just, you know, clicks. Mm -hmm. So it's not really as it used to be. Those techniques help and you will not stay in those techniques always. Like your brain will mm -hmm. learn to do them immediately. Yeah. So, so <laughs> I would say for me, um, reading has definitely improved um it's hard for me to say how much because i don't quite remember you know how it was before um okay. and 
you know, that's kind of the, the blessing and the curse of, you know, getting evidence-based services so young is, you know, <laughs> you don't yeah. quite remember it before. But I do, I do have some memories of the struggle in, you know, elementary school of, you know, seeing other classmates, like just getting stuff and doing it. And, you know, like, how, how are they doing this so quickly and fast? And, you know, yeah. I'm, this is hard for me. I'm not doing it right yet. Like, how, how are they doing this? And, you know, that has completely changed. You know, I would, I would actually count, you know, English, you know, reading, spelling, writing, uh, that kind of stuff is actually probably one of my high, highest strengths now. Um, yeah. and, and that's corroborated by, you know, testing in, in school. When we have a lot of standardized testing mm -hmm. um, throughout school here. And it was always a shock to me after the Morris Center to, you know, the, the strong suit that I thought was always my highest, you know, science and math, you know, now English mm -hmm. is higher. I'm scoring higher in English and than some of my <laughs> math and science skills. That happened to me in class. When I came back from the Moore Center, I hated mm -hmm. English class. I was like, I hate reading. I hate this thing. And then I, when I came back, I was like, this is the best class ever. Like I enjoyed it so much, <laughs> like even more classes. I was like, oh, the, the, the hour is gonna end. Like I need more time. <laughs> and English teachers became like my friends because I, you know, I was like, so I wanted to spend more time with them. I wanted to like read more. I wanted them to explain me more things. And uh, they noticed and they kind of like gave me more to work. And I really enjoyed it. That also happened to me. <laughs> yeah. It's a really cool Let's change. Let's let's change the topic just a little bit. Um, I've got another question here. Um, this is an interesting one. Would you say, did you lose any skills that you had before the Morris Center? Um, or did you just add more skills and, you know, school abilities? No, definitely add. That's, not, that's an easy response. Add. Yeah. <laughs> add. You sure? You didn't feel like you lost anything? Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't lose it. I thought I, I, I mean, I in sense of, uh, I, I was more capable, you know, mm -hmm. and I was more like even my personality changed. I was even more expressive mm -hmm. and more out there. I wasn't sorry as much, you know, for mm -hmm. my what I did or what I read or anything. Mm -hmm. um, I think it more added a lot of good things than losing. I lost I lost things that I didn't really want and needed. For, yeah. like, for example, yeah, like saying sorry too much when I read, I, I lost mm -hmm. that. <laughs> That's, That's fantastic. The thing. Uh, mm -hmm. I um, I stopped explaining myself too much. Like I didn't mm -hmm. say I was like sick after a while. I was just trying reading and then if I misspell something, people would like, be like, oh, that happens to me all the time. And I'll be like, I know, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. just like, you know, I didn't. I lost that, like being ashamed. I lost yeah. that. And That's fantastic. That <laughs> I can say the same. I kind of lost the the anxiety about English and you know writing and things like that. You know, essays weren't. It wasn't like, oh my god. The, you know, teacher, professor just assigned an essay. This is like the end of the world. I can't do this, you know, to, okay, all right, we got an essay. I know what to do, you know. I know what and how to write an intro paragraph, three body paragraphs, a conclusion, a thesis statement. I know how to do that. Like, I got this. It's just going to, you know, it's more of now, oh, man, I got to spend two hours writing an essay. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> yes. And now talking about writing, I... At one point, I wrote a blog. Like, I made a blog and I started writing about this website because I was still, I mean, I, I this is a long story, but I went, I went through a lot of schools, mm -hmm. a lot of schools, <laughs> like in total, 12 schools. It was a lot of schools. And the situation in, well, right now I'm in Venezuela, for those mm -hmm. that don't know. And the situation in Venezuela, it's not that great. And that's 
it I kind, of, kind of stopped me from keeping going to the Moore Center because of the situation in Venezuela. Mm -hmm. But I moved to Argentina at one point. Mm -hmm. And in Argentina, I thought, whoa, maybe they had help, you know, there. Mm -hmm. Maybe Latin America is not just Venezuela, that there's no help right now. And maybe, you no, know, it's a bigger country that has, like, it has evolved a lot. Maybe there is. And I went there and I went to a school. And a week after, I told my mom, drop me off. Like, I don't, it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. Here, they're not going to help me. I mean, I seen the help that they give and it's a little more time for on tests and that's it yeah you know not much so uh, i remember um i dropped off school and i wrote a blog about talking how mad i was in latin america that they didn't have help and i like vomited everything there and i wrote it how a dyslexic reads and i gave it to my sister and be like don't erase the words just mm -hmm. add beside it like how you normally write it, that mm -hmm. don't don't erase it because I want to keep, you know, how how we think and how we read intact, so people yeah. learn how it looks, you know. And I did that, and I got a full scholarship to a school because of that blog. And it happened. It happened to be something that really was, you know, an issue for me, and I was mm -hmm. very ashamed of it. To me, just like vomiting the words in a page and throwing it into the world and i got a scholarship a full scholarship uh, in school and it gave me amazing opportunities because of it so sometimes embracing those things really can mm -hmm. you know <laughs> may give you a lot of opportunities we've got some some other comments here uh, angela says uh, congratulations and she thinks it's fantastic that you know, you're having this success as a fashion designer, and mm -hmm. she just hopes that people have positive thoughts about you um, oh. and Venezuela. Ah, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. And we've got a few more. Um, looks like, did you, did your more center training reading spelling in english help your reading and spelling in spanish i, I think we we covered this one a little bit earlier but yeah. if you want to speak about it again because that's something we haven't talked about that you and i previously talked about that you know i, I don't know that you intended to go to university in venezuela no not at all actually i was well at that time i mm -hmm. was in this boarding school in the states mm -hmm and that I got the scholarship from. And uh, COVID happened, <laughs> COVID happened. And I actually, I was very shocked because I was a senior and I was applying to all these universities and college. And I applied to 10 of them, mm -hmm. 10 of the, of the of all those. And I thought maybe I get one, It'd be like mm -hmm. shocking. You know, I, I don't think I'm gonna get anywhere because my scores are not the best because you know mm -hmm. all this situation the reading the writing and my my grades are not the best and i got into nine out of the ten wow. uh, and congratulations was, thank you and i was like wow like i was so shocked and i even graduating high school was for me like wow i graduated you know like this is a big thing and in covid you know, it was kind of hard because there was no celebration. It was like, okay, in laptop, we close the laptop. It's like, okay, we're done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was the yeah. school. That was all the years that you suffered and, you know, you had to mm -hmm. work so hard for it. And, uh, and I got into nine universities, which was, for me was very shocking. Mm -hmm. And uh, but the thing, they were not giving, I'm not American, so they were not giving visas to Americans. Thing. Yeah, because they, they closed all the borders pretty much yeah. you know, all over the world. It yeah, was, and I, I was you know, travel became very, very difficult. Yeah, and I was stuck in the States. I There were not even planes going back to my country. So mm -hmm. I was stuck in, in the States and for like almost a year, <laughs> just like waiting to go into like pass or do something. And uh, after that, I went back to Venezuela because there was only one year mm -hmm. for the you know for them to hold you know the yeah. you had in the university 
And I went back to Venezuela and I was like, you know, I need to make the best out of this. I'll grow my portfolio. I'll, you know, do, I'll get into an institute here, which I thought it was the best one here. Like, it's the best mm -hmm. one here that I could find. And uh, then I'll see if I go back. It's okay. Mm -hmm. And they, now I'm graduated. I graduated from fashion design here, which is not mm -hmm. where I thought it was going to happen, but I'm actually really thankful. But about the Spanish part, coming mm -hmm. back to Venezuela, it was kind of scary because I was like, I never studied in Spanish since years ago, you know? Yeah. So I didn't know if they're going to give me essays, you know, to do. And mm -hmm. they were giving me all these things. And all my practices were in English. And mm -hmm. I was actually kind of scared. And uh, once once I started, I thought, oh, you know, it's, it's an arts. I'm doing design. Probably going to give me more design things, you know, not much essays or things like that <laughs> but they mm -hmm. gave me essays and how it got me started, i was start sweating when they told me how to write an essay and it was like a history essay so it was something that i was like okay this is not like my strength and i went to a teacher like spanish teacher and i said listen we need to write this essay you need to help me i have ideas i just need to organize them and the punctuation to be good <laughs> And for it to make sense, because essays in Spanish are not the same that essays mm -hmm. in English. It's very different. And the structure is uh, different. The structure is different. The vocabulary, everything is very different. Mm -hmm. So I did that, and I it I succeeded. <laughs> it helped. Mm -hmm. And they told me I had like I lost like a couple of points just because of punctuation. But I was like, you know, this is a big. I could not, you know, um, be sad about it. It's, it's a big thing that I did, and mm -hmm. it's something that, you know, I learned. And there's people, I have friends that are lawyers, and I send them mm -hmm. the essay. I'm like, listen, mm -hmm. I know you You speak Spanish better than me. You're a lawyer and mm -hmm. in Venezuela, so I need you to read this. And they read it, and they fix some words, and they send it back. Mm -hmm. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's how I did it, really. <laughs> So would you say that, you know, the skills and stuff that you built with the training at the Morris Center, did you carry those over, some of those over to yeah. Spanish? And did they help? Or did, yes. did they not really apply? No, they, I mean, not everything because it's a different language. Yeah. But like not the, but, you know, everything you guys taught me from the steps, you know, mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of when I talk with the psychologist in the more center, you know, like how to see the problem, not as a problem, mm -hmm. but something that we need to work with. Uh, also the OT, like everything mm -hmm. they, they, they showed us, it really helped. Like I wasn't so overwhelmed as I used to. So it yeah. wasn't like, oh, this is going to stop me. Like I'm not stuck. You know, mm -hmm. there's ways to figure this out. Yeah. And that's kind of the mentality you guys created. And it was, you know, it, I can definitely see a difference on how I reacted to this new, like, things in Spanish or, you know, mm -hmm. work. <laughs> but yeah. That's fantastic. I, I think that's a big, you know, question that a lot of people that are bilingual or, you know, speak multiple languages and, you know, yeah. not only, you know, those that, are dyslexic and speak multiple languages, but just those that speak multiple languages in general, that, you know, yeah. is, you guys are these kind of, you know, tools. French, Italian, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're working on it. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, the, the most, the coolest part is the fact that, you know, your, the fundamental skills, you know, that, that, foundations level program that you first started with that's you know just working on you know the language processing the phonological processing of you know speech sounds and awareness of your mouth and how your mouth is moving and the shapes and how that all you know connects what shapes you're seeing someone else's mouth making all of that you know is universal you know granted you know some other languages they might make some slightly different sounds and you know that, that might need to be adapted, possibly. But for the most part, 
a lot of languages use the same sounds. And those core sounds, you know, if you're building that practice and that phonological processing, it'll carry right over. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For example, I had some teachers in university, you'll see this because there's mm -hmm. some teachers that they don't like to explain much. And there's yeah. others that will be fine. Yeah, it happens. And uh, uh, I don't know, for me, for example, things that had a lot of steps really was hard for me. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, in classes, for example, like pattern making that had to do and that you had to do mm -hmm. facial things with numbers, with like a lot of steps and everything mm -hmm. had like a little trick and the teacher like just threw them in different orders. There was like no order. I had to create all that. I had to create, yeah. I, like, I wrote everything. I, I put audio, like I grabbed my phone and I like recorded the whole class. You know, these are things mm -hmm. that you guys taught me, that you told me, no, you can record the whole class and hear it again if you need yeah. to. And mm -hmm. you can, like, for me, for example, for me and me, I had to do one thing. I'm like, or I listen or I, t I write everything. Mm -hmm. So I heard the audio kind of helped for me to, like, rewrite everything was happening mm -hmm. with a visual to it. I also do a lot of drawing for visualization mm -hmm. more that you guys mm -hmm. also told me that really worked, and it does. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> For example, the pattern making, I do the drawing and I did different colors for everything and the color mm -hmm. helped, helped mm -hmm. a lot. And I put like, you know, A, like every step, like A, B, C, or one, two, three, and that like mm -hmm. helped me narrow down and it wasn't as overwhelming at the class. Yeah. The first class I started crying because I was like, oh my God, there's no help, <laughs> I'm gonna do it. And then after a while I told the teacher like, listen, I'm gonna be a little slow. Like I told her, I'm really slow, but I really want to be good at this. And mm -hmm. if you can give me, if there's a way that we can talk and do more classes, or if somebody that you can like show me that can help me beside the class, so we can repeat the class. And all those skills were because at some point I had to learn them really nice. It wasn't because by myself I, I was like, oh, this helps. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but it worked. And at the end, all my friends grabbed my book and they were like making copies of my book because they were like, this works. <laughs> this is the best way to like learn this. And it, they shared it every time. It worked. <laughs> it's fantastic. They, they, they benefited from your notes. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Like, and that's no, when did, I, did you ever... Would you have uh -huh. ever expected that that was how things were going to go? You know, and as a when you were 12, would you expect that later on, you know, your classmates would be using your notes to study? No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. But I, I was very organized. And I remember, like, once I was very focused on something, I'm, you know, I was just you know, trying to make it, you know, as pretty as possible to say for me to learn mm -hmm. it or more organized for myself. And then I learned, oh, it's just, it is not just the dyslexic brain that works. Mm -hmm. Like every brain works like this. There's just, this method yeah. is so much better for learning. Mm -hmm. Because I have friends that are not dyslexic, but they told me your notes are so much better than the book, you know? Mm -hmm. Or I these methods really work. Or I give them tips for like before classes when they're like really confused or something. Mm -hmm. And at the end, I was kind of a tutor. <laughs> I was kind of a tutor. That it really helped because teaching people also helps you learn it. So it's exactly, that. it's double practice. Yeah. You know, to be able to teach it to someone else, you have to have a whole other level of understanding yourself. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Awesome. We, look, we've got a few more questions here. Let's. We'll try and answer these and. We've been on here for quite a while, so we'll probably wrap it up here after this one. Okay. So yeah. Emma is asking, what type of things would I be learning with this program differently from what you norm normally learn at school? And how in a day, how a day in their life is going to be if they go through the program? Okay. Well, it's very different because I've seen that there's there a lot of methods about dyslexia, like in the States, for example, there's a lot of help and there's 
I've seen very different names for everything that is out yeah, there. There's a lot of them. Yeah, there's a lot of them. But for example, at the school that I was at, they it was for dyslexics. So mm -hmm. I was like, oh well, let me see how this works differently than the Morris Center because I already had that help. So I already had mm -hmm. like this taking color, you know, all this. And once I was there, I noticed, oh, this really doesn't work. <laughs> like, yeah. It's sad. It's really sad. But I was like, oh, this really doesn't work because it's so slow. Like once I, in a week with you guys, I was already reading. In mm -hmm. this school, I, will, I didn't even really pay attention to it much because I was like, I already got this. Like mm -hmm. the more center already took care of this. <laughs> but there's a lot of methods that really do not have facts around it. Like it doesn't really work. And, uh, and that's that's the big difference. Yeah, that and I love if, if I can interject and just highlight that real quick that you know yes. what you said of having evidence behind it. You know, yes, is I remember in the, most, the tests. I I loved mm -hmm. it because I could see like physically, like oh, okay, mm -hmm. I can see where this is going. Or, oh, oh, this is why I'm this way. Oh, and there's tests for like almost everything. <laughs> it's crazy. So I noticed like, oh, it's tangible. You know, you can you can see it. It's not like out of this world. It's, you know, there's, you guys have already studied this. And by the other question that, like how does it look? I mean, just starting from the sounds, for me, that was crazy. Like you, school tells you like, oh, you need to read the A, B, C, D, you know, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And in, in, in you guys, you, you went right to the sounds. And at mm -hmm. first I was, I was a joke. I was like, I'm not a kid. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm not a baby. <laughs> and after a while, they're like, okay, just you know, take it with step by step. Trust me, it's gonna work. And then after doing, I'm like, okay, this has a lot of science behind it. Like this actually works so much best. Like the movements have have a note, have a you know, the movement of the mouth has a, have a vibration. The vibration has a sound. Mm -hmm. The sound means this. They, I remember the first day I said, oh, that's an A. And you guys were like, we don't talk about letters. Yeah. Your signs. <laughs> Your letters are on vacation. You know? Exactly. They're, <laughs> they're on vacation. We're not talking about them. And I, I was shocked. I was like, what? Like, well, how, how are you, like, then how do you do this? <laughs> and that was a big shock. How am I going to read There's with no letters? That, yes. And the OT classes, for example, I remember that they were like, I, I remember like, these are things for babies, like the crawling that really helped to connect this both sides of the brain really mm -hmm. well. Like there's physical things that you can do that also help your brain to succeed, uh, succeed and uh, be better really. So the OT classes were crazy. I thought, wow, that's incredible. The, the sheet, the paper in the beginning when you get to the morning center in the morning that you fill out like, the meals, how much time you slept, the toothbrushes that you give me exercises for the toothbrushes mm -hmm. i remember those uh, and yeah. that, that, you know building that uh oral motor and sen oral sensory awareness in your mouth you know is that that's a very big piece and you know that's not something you're going to do in school you know yeah not at and all. A, a big a big piece of this too is you know to answer Emma's question. Yeah. What Carlota is speaking of here is the intensive clinic model, where you know you bring in the not just the the evidence based programs, but you bring in the occupational therapy and the speech language pathologist and the psychologist, and it's very intensive. You know, six hours a day. You're doing probably, you know, anywhere from you know, four to six, maybe more or less hours of the language work in a day, maybe a, a few hours of the occupational therapy work in a day. You're seeing a psychologist every now and then too, you know, it's a, a very broad reaching and intense program compared to, you know, if you were, and you had some experience with this um, online, you know, so the, uh, let's give a little perspective on what the online was like for you as well, not just. Well, the, when I the first learned, yeah, 
when I first started, it was very different from what it's now because it was very at the beginning of the program. But I see now that it's so much it has grown and has gone so much better. For me, it was more face to face. Like we had a mm -hmm. uh, conversation, like uh, like us right now, pretty much, like mm -hmm. FaceTime. And with a like, teacher. It's still like that. Time. Okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you have That's the. Still a great piece. You also have uh, the the games, right? The physic, the in online. Yes. So you still have, you know, a, a virtual version of the the program, and you know, okay. you might play like some some games with the mouth picture, some matching and tic tac toe, that kind of thing, to kind of build the practice and awareness of those. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it was like after after school. I remember I had mm -hmm. those and uh, it really helped me to that change <clears throat> sorry that change between um the school and the more i remember thinking oh this is a, like the important part of the day <laughs> like mm -hmm. this is where i need to give my my whole attention and it really helped because it wasn't like that like the difference from going to more which is the best part i loved it mm -hmm. and i if i had a choice i would have stayed in the more center and gone to the classes apart mm -hmm. from this in our program and uh, when it built it was good because I, I wasn't alone with the at home doing the whole exercises it was mm -hmm. i didn't feel as alone like i could keep doing it and they were i wasn't like stopping it because i i remember thinking i don't want to stop because i don't want my progress to like get it's not gonna get worse but it's not gonna evolve yeah. So you want to continue that growth. Yes. So I actually really liked it because of that. So I could keep going. I was doing something. Mm -hmm. I know. And so. if, if I can add to that, the, you know, what you're mm -hmm. describing is because you had already done a lot of the earlier stages of the program in person. Yeah. You know, if, you know, say Emma were to do those stages online, um it's very similar it's the same programs you know the the difference really is you know that transdisciplinary intensive model you know if you're doing it online you might do it one two three hours a day not six hours a day and you know you we're you know hopeful that in the future you know maybe we can have you know occupational therapy services virtually but until the technology is there, you know, for you to be able to really, you know, get those sensory inputs in a virtual manner, that that piece can't really be done outside of the clinic. So yeah. that's one of the, the differences. But what you're still going to have that's very different from just normal school is, you know, you're starting working on that that sound level, that foundational level of language way before school even starts school starts at you know letters and that's yes. really like starting at the second floor as far as language skills go you know and where a lot of the um, the difficulties and areas that you know could benefit from improvement and you know increased practice with dyslexia are typically, you know, at that foundational level that, you know, I don't want to say so much that baby level, but that's, you know, where yeah. a lot of this kind of is with, you know, the speech sounds. And like you said, Carlota, you know, I'm not a baby. Like what, what are you guys have, trying to have me do here? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, that's, that's really the big difference is, you know, in school, they just skip right past that. They assume you've got that and they go right over it, pass it up, you know, but straight to letters. Cool. Like, it's such a good tool to have. Because, for example, mm -hmm. somebody that cannot have the, doesn't have the possibility to go to the Moore Center in the States, mm -hmm. for example, like here in Venezuela, can do that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like there's an option if you choose exactly. to use it. But there's mm -hmm. an option. You know, you have and this option that is available that is mm -hmm. there for you that if you follow it you will get better and um, i think it's definitely something that i mean it's great for it's already worldwide so 
everybody mm -hmm. can have access to it. So I think that's great. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> well, Carlotta, we've we've already taken a lot of your time. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Oh, here, maybe I should start with this one. Uh, okay. <laughs> Dr. Conway wants to <laughs> apologize for the, the speech to text errors, but um, you know, just wants to congratulate you on everything that you've accomplished so far and wishing you the best. And you know, and you can read this. I don't know why I'm trying to <laughs> paraphrase it. <laughs> yeah, I can see. Um, Thank you so much, Dr. Conway, <laughs> for the message. If it wasn't for you guys, I don't know really who I would have been, really. And a lot of my success comes from you know, tackling those things at that time. And I know I was very, I mean, I was at the right time at the right moment, really. And I'm really grateful for that and for your help. And in any way I could help, I wish I, wish I could bring the more center here <laughs> at some point. <laughs> It would be great, actually. But thank you for it. Hopefully. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Let, hopefully we can make it happen. You know, we never know what the future holds. <laughs> yes. All right. Oh, and we've got one more. Uh, oh, Amy. Amy says, so proud of you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Amy. I miss you all. <laughs> yeah. I should visit someday. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much, Carlota. And, you know, we really appreciate you taking the time to share your story, answer audience questions from, you know, the perspective of a fashion designer who, you know, despite all of these challenges in your life, have, you know, just continued to blaze your own path and defy the odds. And, you know, I guess we should end off with maybe, you know, where where are you looking, you know, towards in the future? You know, what's, what are your next steps for you? <laughs> well, right now I finished, I graduated from fashion design uh, a couple, two, more, two weeks ago and mm -hmm. Right now I'm looking, my career is very, it's like a very short time. It's three years, the career fashion mm -hmm. design and where I studied. So I want to extend the studies. I wanted to go mm -hmm. to more specific areas. And for that, I think it's best Europe right now because mm -hmm. the industry is a lot bigger there. So I yes. want to learn. Yes. And I want to learn there. And uh, I think that's the next step <laughs> right now. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, congratulations, Carlota, on your graduation. And we wish you the best in the future. And just want to say thank you so much. We truly appreciate you coming on here to share your story and answer questions. And wish you all the best. You too. Thank you for, for your time. All right. Thank you. Take care. Bye.